Hey, glad you're here. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to show you how to replace the Bowden tube on your Ender 3 3D printer. In Let's get ready to rumble! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome! Welcome to the Iron Horse Route, home of the Denver and Rio Grand Western. This is Brian. I'm glad you're here. And if you're not already a subscriber, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Because when you're a subscriber here, you get access to a lot of great model railroad video uploads. And so now that you're subscribed, we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's video upload, which is coming up right now. Let's get ready to Invariably, at some point, if you have an Ender 3 3D printer, you're going to need to replace the Bowden tube. And you need to do it with a Capricorn Bowden tube. If you have the stock Ender 3 3D printer Bowden tube, you have, well, a crappy Bowden tube on there. This is a very good Bowden tube. It's not expensive. You can get two of them out of each use. I've cut mine in half already, okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be installed replacing the old one and installing this one today and showing you just how we do it. So we'll be switching over to the other view in just a second. And all you're going to need is a cutter, a straight cutter. And if you don't have this, you can use scissors or something. But the thing is, you've got to make very, very sure that you cut it out at a 90 degree angle. All right because it's gonna cause you big problems if it's not perfectly cut at a 90 degree angle. You also need a wrench that will fit the pneumatic coupler on the top of the hot end, and that's all you're gonna need, okay? So we're gonna switch over here to the other view, and I'm gonna show you how to change the button so you can get the Capricorn in, and you're gonna find that you get a lot better prints after you do so. So what you're gonna to wanna to do to change your Bowden tube is definitely going to need to go ahead come back here you're going to pull the blue clip and put it somewhere safe unscrew your pneumatic coupler from here next you'll have to remove your ties twist ties or hopefully you have something a little more organized than me um, but the enders require maintenance and so I don't use anything fancy here because I mean I do this I take these apart you know four or five times a year probably and if you change anything you gotta undo all this to get it out they give you this nice little sleeve that everything comes in but you've got to do maintenance on it so the sleeve doesn't last long <clears throat> all right now you're here what you're going to want to do is because you've been printing all right so let's take this blue clip off and i don't need to do this because i just uh changed the hot end in a previous video and so mine's not even, mine will come straight out. You need to come up here with your uh, nozzle up to 200 or 190 or 180 or whatever. If 180 doesn't work, you can go up. 200 safe. And then what you're going to do is once you get to the 200, all right, you're going to take your wrench and unscrew. pretty far now if you have any filament in there if yours is not perfectly clean I want you to heat your nozzle up which I guess I could go ahead and do I'm gonna heat my nozzle up to 210 Now, I want you to go get a piece of filament, 10, 12 inches. <clears throat> all right. And what all I'm going to do is when the nozzle heats up, I'm going to push this through and make sure you're getting a clean single stream out. Then you know your nozzle's clear and everything before you change the tube. 
and you want you do want to know that your nozzle is clear before you change the tube. All right. Now this one that I just took out. All right. We're at 198. So what I can do is I should be able to push my filament through and see a single clean stream coming down. As long as you got a single clean stream and you pull it out quickly, you know you got a clear nozzle. If you get a squiggly or anything like that, you want to keep pulling out, clear it at the bottom, push it back in until you get a stream single stream. Go get more filament if you need to. Continue to press in and if you're getting squiggle, 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 keep pushing for a minute, then pull it back out, clear the squiggles, keep doing it. All right, keep doing it until you get a single string. Once you get a single string, we want the pneumatic coupler on the top that came with your Capricorn bogey tube. Tighten it down where you can with your hands. Get it snug. All right. <clears throat> now you got here is your bone tube you must make sure this is already cut in half but I used this to cut it right and so I'm gonna make sure that I have it at a 90 degree angle on both ends this was the stock end so I'm not messing with that one all right I take the stock end Okay, because you get you get twice this and so I cut it in half and I take the stock end of each side so it's both ends where I not the part where I cut in the middle the part that I cut in the middle goes into the extruder gear the stock end goes down here so put that in a little press down all the way down to the nozzle till it hits once it hits, you want your blue clip. This is essential. This keeps the tube from getting pushed back up. Your tube should be locked in now. All right, over here on this side, they did send me a handy dandy brand new one. So I'm gonna, oh wait, I can't use this one because I need a bigger one for this. This comes with the uh, wrong size. So what I will do is I'll take the old one off which it's fine I like that they're the same size as the other one too because then I don't have two sizes there now I'm going to come here push in insert all the way blue clip lock it in all right now that Bowden tube is all the way down to the nozzle or to the heat break and it's locked in. This one's all the way in as far as it'll go locked in and they're cut at 90 degree angles. Now we're going to come back in with our twist ties. That's how you install a new Capricorn Bowden tube and replace your old crappy stock one from the Ender 3. But this is, man, your the filament runs through there really smooth and um, it doesn't cake up in there and so you just have a lot less problems. This is a very inexpensive uh, fix. You know, you got a, a, an eight, nine dollar fix here. You got a twelve dollar fix here. You got a ten dollar fix here if you have a problem anywhere in there. All right, your thermos doors, you get about six for ten dollars. Your heaters, you get about six for ten dollars. All right, if you have to replace those, that could easily be done. And so basically, if you need help replacing the heater or the thermos door, I did a video showing you how to replace the whole hot end, and I had to do that in there so you could see that. If you uh, need to see how to replace the single gear extruder or the stock extruder that came with the Ender 3, 
you need to go see my video on this because this explains what happens with the stock one when it cracks. So if you're having problems that you can't detect, go check out the video about this. Thank you very much for watching. If you're uh, not a subscriber, I want to encourage you to subscribe. Please click the bell icon and share this with your other 3D printing and or modeling friends. This is primarily a model railroad channel, but we also do a lot of 3D printing around here. So.